Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus chapter 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin, and commit a trespass against the Lord, we're still on the trespass, when you've gone over the boundary line, and lie unto his neighbor, in that which was delivered him, to keep or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or has deceived his neighbor, or has found that which was lost and lie concerning it and swear falsely in any of these that a man doeth sin is therein okay we're looking at goods given over found and we're looking at lying lying unto his neighbor a lie is a lie white pink pink a dot polka dot it's a lie Santa Claus Easter Bunny Tooth Fairy is a lie and you will be judged as a sinner little stories little tales jokes words of our mouths are lies and when you there are liars out there that deceive congregations they have trespassed they have broken over the line that goes forth now what's happened is somebody has given you something to hold to use whatever to keep or in fellowship that's an interesting word and you lie concerning what was been given to you I don't know where it is I have no idea I don't know I lost it and if that's not the truth it's a lie or have found that which was lost you're going down the street, you're going somewhere, and somebody, a wallet is left behind, and you find it. And it's got money in it. And lie concerning. Did you find the brown wallet here in the chairs? I lost my. No, I didn't see no wallet. No, I haven't. That's a lie. And swears falsely. You swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. And then you lie. And any of these that a man does finding, doing, is sinning. Finder keepers is never a thing in the Bible. Finders keepers, somebody comes to you and says, Hey, did you find something like this? And then you lie and say, Well, no, I didn't. You're sinning. And you say, Oh, well, I found there's keepers and I get to keep it. And you're, that's not the Bible. That's a lie. Children. I grew up with it. Finders, keepers, lose your weepers is a lie. You're, you are to return that to the person that lost it. Even a lost and found box is never to be handed over to charity. It is to remain until the person claims it. Then it shall be because he has sinned, lying, about something that you found. And is guilty. Now look at it again. Guilty, sin, sin and guilt. That he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he has deceived, deceitfully gotten, or that which has been delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which we found. Okay. You go up to somebody and you pull a gun on them. You get in, in a pulpit with a nice, fleshy, flashy language. 
somebody hands you something or you find it on the park bench or you find it wherever you are to return that thing you are to give it back however you got it or all that about which he has sworn falsely I, I swear to help the truth but I cross my fingers I, I lie he shall even restore it in the principle the base amount now let's say it's a wallet and it has a hundred dollars in there even number you're to restore that wallet in the hundred dollars and add a fifth part interest I'm not that good in math. I don't know what fifth part of a hundred dollars. I would five dollars. So you owe him a hundred five dollars. Twenty. You owe twenty dollars. That would deter crime. If you got caught red-handed, you were caught with the merchandise. You deceived the church. Imagine a, a man in a church and he gets, let's say, a thousand dollars. Boy, here I go now. A thousand dollars he gets from the congregation and he's deceitfully gotten that that thousand dollars well now he owes that congregation a hundred dollars a thousand dollars and a fifth part which I would think 200 maybe figure out fifth part that would man that right there would, would get you to do right Interest charge for lying and give it unto him to whom it appertaineth, which it belongs to him, you give it to him in the day of his trespass offering. So, remember the offering we talked about about trespassing? Not only has he got to bring the offering that we read about last night, but now he's got to give back what he took, what he lied about. What was given to him, what he stole, however he got it. And then now he's got to add a fifth part. It's going to cost a lot. An animal. The, 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 the item. And then the fifth part more. Remember we talked about last night in the trespass offering? You are to make right with the person. You can't say, oh, God, you know, I lied about this wallet with $100. I'm so sorry. Forgive me, Lord God. What are you going to do with that wallet? Oh, I'm going to keep it. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Exactly what I said last night. You take that wallet, give it back. And you know what? Fifth part. For the lie. Now, you found a wallet that's got $100 in it. Sir, did you find a black wallet? It's 100 Yes, I did. And the ID is you. Here you go. Where's the fifth part? You didn't lie about it. You said, yeah, I did find it. And when it comes to trespassing and lying, you owe more money. Better for the truth. God speaks for the truth. And it shames me that preachers get in the pulpit and start opening up their big fat gums and lying to the congregation. By stories, by tales, by jokes. And yeah, you know, Santa Claus is a lie, but their big mouth is not a lie. May they lose a fifth part at the judgment seat of Christ. I don't know. He shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord. A ram. I bet you that costs a lot of money. With the without blemish of the flock. So you've got to take the best ram. Without estimation for a trespass offering. He said, well, what if he didn't have a, a, a ram? Do you know what they were doing in Jesus' time in the temple? That he went in there tipped all the tables. They were selling doves. They were selling pigeons. For a good profit. Well, oh, this offering, I need a turtle dove. or need, Well, we got turtle dove for five chicos or whatever. That's what they were doing when Jesus tipped everything over. They were making a profit off the people by the animals that was needed. So, ram the flock with thy estimation. Thy estimation. You owe money for lying. Had you just said, yep, here it is, take it. There would have been no trespass. For a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, Jehovah. And it shall be forgiven him for anything, for anything of that which he had done in trespassing thereof. 
And when he walks away, he's out. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Now we're going to go back to Leviticus 1, 1 through 17. Commanding, command Aaron his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. We did this in Leviticus 1. This is a verily, verily. It's so important. Five chapters later, we're going to re-review re it. It's a burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night. Unto the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment. And his linen, linen breeches. Shall he put on his flesh. And take up the ashes which the fire has consumed. With the burnt offering. On the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. So he walks up the altar. He's got to get dressed. The burnt offering has been burning all night. He gets dressed in his priestly garb. He walks over and scrapes out all the ashes, puts it in the pail, and puts the pail by the altar. He shall put off his garments and put on other garments. So he gets dressed. He walks over to, to the brazen altar. He cleans it out, puts the ashes by the altar, takes off the garments, puts on another clothes, picks up the ashes without the camp into a clean place. So outside the camp, there's a clean place. You'll dump those ashes. Uh, what would that be today? You're going to clean out your fireplace. It needs clean. So you put on your, your, your clothes and you scoop it out. You put it in the bucket. You lay it there. You go back upstairs or wherever your bedroom. You get changed again and then you bring it outside and dump it out. And you have to do it exactly how God told you to do it. And you can't wear nothing that causes sweat. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. Hell. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereof the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out in pictures hell. You had to put wood on it. There was a blind man that God, that Jesus Christ, God opened his eyes halfway. He said, "What do you, I see men as trees walking. And there are parables, there are stories of men liking the trees and trees liking the men in the Bible. So men are in hell fueling hell's fire. It is never to go out. Hell will never go out. Revelation 20 says hell death and hell will be cast in the lake of fire now we got a problem there's no brazen altar today and that fire is out so the Jew cannot do the law today the brazen altar is missing and the fire is missing so there are Jews today who if they follow, try or do whatever the law says to do, they can't. And without Jesus Christ, they will die and go into hell. God has made it for them impossible. Unlikely never to get to God the Father except by Jesus Christ. And this is the law of the meat offerings. We read this in Leviticus chapter 2. A verily, verily, it is so important. Five chapters later, we're going to re-review -re it again. The sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord. No one else but the sons of Aaron. Before the altar. He shall take of it his handful. Remember, he puts his hand in there, handful. Of the flour of the meat offering, and of the oil thereof, and of the frankincense, which is upon the meat offering. And shall burn it upon the altar for his sweet Savior, even the memorial of it unto the Lord God approves of that God said I like that the remainder thereof shall Aaron his sons eat with unleavened bread shall it be eaten in the holy place in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation shall they so they can walk around this tabernacle in the holy place in the courtyard and they can enjoy this, this meat offering after the handful has been taken and put into the fire it shall not be bacon with leaven. No leaven at all. 
I have given it unto them, the priests, for their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy. It is a sin offering as and as the trespass offering. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat it. Eat of it. It's theirs. It shall be a statue forever in your generations concerning the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Everyone that touches it shall be holy. So here's one of the foods of the priests. The meat offering. Whatever's left over after the handful is theirs. And the Lord said that's holy. I never heard anything growing up in the Catholic Church. I've heard holy water, but I never heard holy meat offering. But there it is. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is the offering of Aaron and of his sons, which they shall offer unto the Lord in the day when he is appointed. This is the high priest. When that high priest is anointed, a new one steps in. The tenth part of an ephod of fine flour for a meat offering perpetual. Half of it in the morning and half thereof at night. There's a lamb killed in the morning. There's a lamb killed at night. In a pan it shall be made with oil. And when it is bacon, thou shalt bring it in. And the bacon pieces of the meat offering shalt thou offer for a sweet savor unto the Lord. When that, when that high priest is anointed, and the priest of his sons that is anointed in his stead, who is taken over, shall offer it to the new high priest. He's going to take this meat offering, he's going to offer it, because now he's in the office. It is a statue forever unto the Lord. It shall be wholly burnt. For every meat offering for the priest shall be wholly burnt. It shall not be eaten. So this is one part of the meat offering. Offering by the priest himself. You don't eat it. But when the people bring it. You can eat it. So. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying. Speak unto Aaron and unto his son. Saying. This is the law of the sin offering. We talked about this in Leviticus 4. This is bringing us to Calvary. Verily, verily, it's important. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, that's the brazen altar, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. Jesus Christ is most holy. The priest that offered it for a sin shall eat it. The sin offering is given to the priest. He shall eat it. In the holy place shall it be eaten. In the court of the tabernacle of the congregation. Again like the meat offering. He can eat it in the tabernacle. Whosoever touched the flesh thereof shall be holy. You touch that sin offering. You're holy. And when there is, and when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof. Upon any garment, thou shalt wash that whereon it was sprinkled in the holy place. What? You said you didn't see any of this the other night where any of the garments have been washed. Well, that's right here. Yeah, yeah, that's true with that, but it says any garment. Any blood where this blood falls on any of the garments, including the priest's garments, is to be washed. But. Nothing about the brazen altar being washed. By, but the earthen vessel, clay, wherein it is sodden shall be broken, because clay will absorb that blood. And if it be sodden in a brazen or brass pot, it shall be both scored and rinsed and washed, thoroughly clean. All the males among the priests shall eat thereof. It is most holy. And no sin offering whereof any of the blood is brought into the tabernacle congregation to reconcile with all in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burnt 
in the fire. Now, we got something interesting here about this sin offering. Jesus Christ suffered and died and bled on that cross for our sins. And I guarantee most, I'm not going to say all, most of his blood ended up, I know one place on the shrouds, when they covered him and punched him. I would assume it came upon the soldier's hands when they punched him. It came upon the thorn of the crowns. From the Sanhedrin's courtroom, or the, the, uh, the mansion, or castle, I forget what it said. From that point that he is beaten before the Sanhedrin, and to the spear that went in his side, and being covered with, with that holy linen, and I'm not sure being laid on that rock, the blood of Jesus Christ from that point at the courtroom, all the way to the empty tomb, there was the blood of Jesus Christ all over the place. And I guarantee none of them washed the garments. No one ever broke them in the vessels. No one ever scored and cleaned and rinsed those pots. I don't know where the blood of Jesus went. But according to the law, if they were to do right. Now let's go to John 19.31. Let's see what they were concerned about. They broke the law. 19.31. This is a sin offering. In nineteen thirty, Jesus has died, nineteen thirty one. The Jews, that's who we've been talking about, thereof, because it was the preparation, the Sabbath I mean the the uh, Passover, that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For that Sabbath day was a high day. It's a Wednesday. Not a Friday. The Bible told you. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken. And that they might be turned, taken away. Oh, we got to hurry up and get right and go eat the Passover. And yet the, the sin offering has just been made. The Passover has died. What are you worried about? So in fact, in what we just read, And there came soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with them. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forth came out blood and water. There's the blood that was offered, and there's the water for the rush, for the washing that we just saw in Leviticus. Oh, well, isn't that interesting? And they're so concerned, and they're so worried about, oh, we got to be clean, we got to get everything right for the Passover. Your Passover was just laid out. Your sin offering was just made. And you may not have the blood of Jesus Christ on your garments. And you may. They may have. But according to I think it's Jeremiah Ezekiel. I think it's Ezekiel. You've got the blood on your fingertips. And you're not holy. And remember with this sacrifice here. Anything that touches that. You can't touch Jesus today physically. You cannot touch that sin offering. That's not what's going to save you. By faith and belief, by the word of God, through your heart that Jesus Christ is able. That burnt offering, I mean that burnt altar, that, that brazen altar is out. It's gone. No Jew can do what we just, we've just we been studying about. They must believe on the Son of God is the sacrifice of the sin offering, is the Passover lamb to get through. There's nothing else you can do. Nothing else.